Welcome back to the course. In this video and in the next couple of videos, we're going to understand about the REST API or RESTful Web Services. That is what the people will call. When I started out understanding about the RESTful Web Services at the beginning, I was so confused about the concept because I did not find the exact resource on the internet to understand about the REST API. I did not find the resource for understanding what is REST API and where exactly we will use the REST API and what is the purpose of using the REST API. So I did not find the exact resources for all these things. And later I figure it out and I understand about the concept in a simple and easy to understand examples. In this video, I'm going to teach you how I understand about the REST API in the same way I will teach you. Let's begin. So what is REST API? REST API is nothing but a collection of or a group of URLs which is available on the internet. So it is just a collection of URLs like www.myapp.com slash read notes, myapp.com slash create notes, myapp.com slash delete notes. It is a bunch of URLs just like www.facebook.com or youtube.com or google.com. But what the difference is that these URLs, when you make a request to these URLs, these URLs will not return any web page, just like HTML. So these URLs will not return the web pages. Instead, these URLs will perform a certain operation. For example, the first URL read notes will perform the fetching the list of notes from the server. The second URL which is responsible for creating a note on the server. Similarly, each URL performs a certain operation and each URL, we call it as an endpoint. In RESTful Web Services, each URL call it as a REST endpoint. And each REST endpoint contains a HTTP method. So if you take any REST endpoint, it contains the HTTP method. Well, there are several HTTP methods are available. For example, there are 10 to 11 HTTP methods are available, I guess, out of which there are four most important and most commonly used HTTP methods are there. And these HTTP methods are used to perform the basic database operations, which is create, read, update, and delete, which is nothing but the CRUD operations. The HTTP get method, which is used to fetch the data from the server. The HTTP POST method, which is used to create the data on the server. The HTTP PUT method, used to update the data on the server. The HTTP DELETE method, delete the data from the server. So these are, these are the most commonly used HTTP methods. Out of these four HTTP methods, the HTTP POST and PUT method, it supports the HTTP request body, which means we can send the data to the server inside the HTTP request body. Well, for the delete and get HTTP methods, you can pass the data, but only in the URL. The get and delete does not support the request body. So then what is our end goal? So our end goal is to create these kind of URLs and make them available on the internet. So at the end of the day, we need to create a REST API, which is nothing but the bunch of URLs. We need to make them available on the internet. Okay. Well, all right, Bhushan, we will create these URLs and we will make them available on the internet. Then what next? What we can do with these URLs? What is the use of these URLs? So once these URLs are available on the internet, anyone in the world can call to our REST endpoints or make a request to our REST endpoints from their application. For example, an Android application can make a request to our REST endpoint and they can consume our REST endpoint. They can call our REST endpoint and they can show our data in their application. Similarly, an iOS application can make a request to our REST endpoint and they can consume the data and they can display it in their application. Similarly, not only Android or iOS application, you can take any client application even you can take the server side application like the .NET application, even the other Java application can 
make a request to the REST endpoint and they can consume the data. So with this, what we have understand so far is a REST API is nothing but two software applications communicate each other on the internet to exchange the information. Correct. That's exactly what it is. So the REST API or the RESTful web service is nothing but the two different applications communicate with each other over the network to exchange the information. That is what the web service is. An application which exposes the service and another application which consume the service. That's what it is. And the good thing about these RESTful web services or the REST API is these are language and platform independent which means we can develop a REST API in any programming language and these REST endpoints can consume by any other application which can be developed in any other language. For example, the REST endpoint or the REST API can be developed using Java and the other application which is developed using the .NET can consume the REST endpoints. So which is completely a language independent and platform independent. Super. So this leads us to a very important question, which is then what is the data format to exchange the information? Okay, Bushan, you said the two applications will communicate with each other over the network to exchange the information. If these two applications are built on two different languages, then how they are going to communicate, how they are going to exchange the information. What is the data format? Well, there are different data formats are available to exchange the information over the network while these two applications are communicating. There are XML based data formats are available, JSON data formats are available, text based data formats are available. Out of these three, the JSON is the most commonly and widely used data format to exchange the information over the network. We send the data in JSON format to the server and the server will respond to those requests in JSON format. Very simple. Well, then what is JSON? So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It contains a key value pairs. Just like in our Java, the hash map and map contains the key value pairs, right? Similarly, the JSON also contains a key value pairs. But in JSON, the key will always be in a string, but value could be anything. Value, it could be a string, it could be a number, it could be Boolean, or even it could be an object. So it could be anything. And here is a sample for the JSON data format. As you can see in the left hand side, which is the key and the right hand side, which is the value. If you observe the keys, which always be in a string, but the values, it could be a string, it could be number, it could be even an object. Pretty simple, right? So this is all about the REST API or the RESTful web services. So this is how I understand about the RESTful web services. I hope you understand and I hope the concept got clear to you. In case if you have any questions, feel free to open up a question in the q and I will happy to answer your questions. I will see you in the next video. Well, in the next video, we're going to discuss about the application architecture. I will see you in the next video.